Good morning, church. Welcome to Resurrection Lutheran Church Alive and Online. We are honored that you have invited us into your home and into your lives. We come to you from our sanctuary here on Plank Road in Fredericksburg, Virginia. And welcome to all of those who have joined us from near and far. If you're tuning in for the very first time, we extend a special welcome to you. We encourage you to interact with us through Facebook chat and the Google site comment box. We want to hear from you. You can put your prayer requests in the comment sections that, run on the, that runs on the right side of our Facebook feed. Be sure to submit them by the end of the sermon. We're on a 20 to 30 second delay, and so that will allow us to get the names up to the altar so we can include them in the prayers. Immediately following this worship service is our first Sunday of the month, virtual coffee hour via Zoom. All RLC members received a secure link in your email. If you would like to join us and haven't received the link, <clears throat> make a request in the comment section and we'll messenger you the link. On Tuesday, we will hold a virtual agape feast at 7 p.m. and a secure link will be sent to you tomorrow via email. If you are not on the RLC email list and would like the link, again, leave a message in the comment section and we'll messenger it to you. Leading us in worship today are Chuck Price, Ali Beck, Terry Evers, and Alex Johnson. In the booth, we have Jeff Slunt, A.J. Beck, and Robert Schul. And I'm Pastor Heidi Moore. So get a cup of coffee and join us as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship of the one true God. Join us as we sing the call to worship, Gather Us In. You can find the words in the bulletin or on the screen. And again, welcome. Here in this place, a new light is streaming. Now is the darkness vanished away. See in this face, our fears and our dreamings brought here to you in the light of the day. Gather us in and lost and forsaken. Gather us in the blind and the lame. Call to us now and we shall awaken. We shall arise at the sound. Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. <clears throat> Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us so that we may serve and live in you in the newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We share the peace with you this day, and we're led by the Women's Bible Study. We meet every single Wednesday. We have a book that we work through, and of course, there's always coffee and good conversation via our Zoom link. 
The peace of the Lord be with you. 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 God's peace be with you. The peace of the Lord be with you. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. And also with you. Join us now as we sing softly and tenderly, Jesus is Calling. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Good night. 
together, let us pray. You are great, O God, and greatly to be praised. You have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Grant that we may believe in you, call upon you, know you, and serve you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Join us now as we sing and listen to scripture. <clears throat> Today's reading is Genesis chapter 24, verses 34 through 38, 42 through 49, and 58 through 67. So he said, I am Abraham's servant. The Lord has greatly blessed my master, and he has become wealthy, and he has given him flocks and herds, silver and gold, male and female slaves, camels and donkeys. And Sarah, my master's wife, bore a son to my master when she was old. And he has given him all that he has. My master made me swear, saying, You shall not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites, in whose land I live. But you shall go to my father's house, to my kindred, and get a wife for my son. I came today to the spring and said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, if now you will only make successful the way I am going. I am standing here by the spring of water. Let the young woman who comes out to draw, to whom I shall say, Please give me a little water from your jar to drink, and who will say to me, Drink, and I will draw for your camels also. Let her be the woman whom the Lord has appointed for my master's son. And before I had finished speaking in my heart, there was Rebecca coming out with her water jar on her shoulder, and she went down to the spring and drew. And I said to her, Please let me drink. She quickly let down her jar from her shoulder and said, Drink, and I will also water your camels. So I drank, and she watered my camels. And then I asked her, Whose daughter are you? And she said, The daughter of Bethuel, Nehor, son from Melcha, bore to him. So I put the ring on her nose and the bracelet on her arms, and then I bowed my head and worshipped to the Lord, and bless the Lord to the God of my master Abraham. 
who had led me by the right way to obtain the daughter of my master's kinsman for his son. Now then, if you will deal loyally and truly with my master, tell me, and if not, tell me, so I may turn either to the right or right hand or to the left. And then they called Rebecca and said to her, Will you go with this man? And she said, I will. So they went away, their sister Rebekah and her nurse, along with Abraham's servant and his men. And they blessed Rebekah and said to her, May you, our sister, become thousands of myriads. May your offspring gain possessions of the gates of their foes. Then Rebekah and her maids rose up and mounted the camels and followed the man. Thus the servant took Rebekah and went his way. Now Isaac had come from Beer Laharoi and went, when, when was settled, to, settled in Negev. Isaac went out in the evening to walk, and in the field, looking up, he saw camels coming. And Rebekah looked up, and when she saw Isaac, she slipped quickly from the camel and said to the servant, who is this man over there walking in the fields to meet us? The servant said, It is my master. So she took her veil and covered herself. And the servant told Isaac all the things that he had done. Then Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent. He took Rebekah and she became his wife. And he loved her. So Isaac was comforted in his mother's death. This is the word of the Lord. <clears throat> the word of the Lord. Let us welcome the gospel in song. Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 11th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, to you O Lord. Lord. Jesus spoke to the crowd, saying, To what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another, We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. And the Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal to him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light the gospel of the Lord praise, praise to, to you, you O Christ. Christ 
I invite the kiddos to join me over here by the trash can. Oh my goodness. Who put this here? Simple enough. I'm just going to move it. I'm going to move this. One more time. Here we go. Lift with the legs, not with the back. It's just not moving. And the reason why it's not moving is because it's really, really heavy. And I've put a lot of things in this trash can. I think that's why it was probably brought up here. I've put all of my sins in this trash can. It can barely contain them. I've put all my worries. I've put all my burdens into this trash can. And it's so heavy, I cannot lift it. Jesus says to us, come to me, all who are weary, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and I will give you peace. You see, that's what Jesus is telling us to cast all of our sins, our worries, and our burdens onto him. Cast our burdens onto Jesus. And he will give us rest. And we'll, he will take all of this upon him, and it will be very, very light. See? We complete our worship series, God's Creative Connection, with Designing Love. In our three-scene early biblical love story, Abraham, uncle to Bethuel and his children Laban and Rebekah, here an unnamed servant of Abraham. And this servant has come seeking a wife for Isaac, Abraham's son. Now, we don't read the response of the two men in our selected Genesis readings today, but here it is in verse 50. This thing comes from the Lord. We cannot speak to you anything bad or good. Or in present-day terms, the Lord did, did this, and we have nothing to say about it. It's easy to get lost in the elements that make us uncomfortable in the 21st century, primarily that Laban and his father Bethuel arrange a marriage for sister and daughter Rebecca to a person they do not know and lives in a foreign land. And of course, there's money involved always. There's a bride price to be paid, and it will be marriage at first sight. Ancient cultural practices are uncomfortable and strange to us as well they should be. And it is good, which is good, because this is not what the story is really about. The focus here is on what God is doing, God has done, is doing, and will do. And how attentive to those in the story are to God's work. Simply put, these people are sharing their God sightings. This thing comes from the Lord. There is explicit trust and recognition of God's leading. And in the run-up to our selected readings today, we hear of Abraham's commissioning his servant to find a woman from Abraham's homeland and bring her back to Canaan for Isaac, who he has not allowed to go. And remember, at this point, Abraham is really, really old, well over 100. Hence, the commissioning of the servant, who at first is really dubious about going in the first place and asks that question, what if she refuses to return with me? Abraham reassures him, the angel of the Lord will go before you, guiding your way and preparing the heart of the right woman. So no problem there. And the servant, in turn, prays to God to make all of this go right. Now, again, we don't know the name of the nationality or, <clears throat> or name, uh, name or nationality of the servant or whether or not he is a God here. Now, he arrives at the well outside of Nahor. This servant 
phrase again, detailing the sign by which God leads the servant to the right woman. And he prays this twice. One more time, we hear of the faithfulness of the servant in chapter 24, verse 48. Then I bowed my head and worshiped the Lord because it worked. She drew water and said all the right things. She's the one. These people are witnessing that God is here and active in their lives. <clears throat> and when it comes to God speaking to us, how do we know it's God? And how do we know that we are discerning correctly what we think we are hearing? <clears throat> in other words, God is using our hands and feet to accomplish God's grand plan for humans. Now this leads to two ways of thinking. Functional agnosticism when it comes to God, God's activities in our life. We don't know for sure, therefore, how can God be here and active in our lives, much less in the world? <clears throat> or, as I have said it more than once, when someone is working to justify their own human whims with the voice of God, you can hear them say, I've been praying about this, and this is what God has led me to do. This is what God is saying to me. Notice the focus on I and me and not God. This kind of thinking, too, is dangerous and can cause significant harm. The reality is scriptures provide a litmus test for this. If it's not consistent with God's love, then it's probably not from God. So how are we to negotiate this? All through my call process, seminary and beyond, and even to this pulpit, it has always been the outward confirmation of the inward call. Yes, I felt called to be here at Resurrection Lutheran Church, but it was the community that had to confirm that inward call that I had. They had to say, you know what? We think that's right. Pastoral calls in the Lutheran Church are done in community. And this extends to our actions and deeds, that we are to ask, where is God in all of this? Or wigiot for short. See, it's not just me praying about it and getting God's official stamp of approval, as if I had some quick access to God by virtue of my pastoral office. Mm -mm. But rather, the entire community asks wigiot and prays together. Not just one person sees the hand of God, but like that of the Genesis story today, sees God's hand from the commissioning of the servant to Rebecca's final answer. We, notice she says, we, not I, we will go. And perhaps that's the frustration that Jesus is having this morning. They cannot recognize the truth that is before them. Even John's cousin, even Jesus' cousin John, can't figure it out. When he asks back at the beginning of the 11th chapter of Matthew, <clears throat> are you the one, are we to wait for another? Jesus responds, go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and poor people have good news brought to them. In other words, what are you witnessing? And what is your witness? The crowds cannot see Jesus for who he really is and misunderstands his and John's actions. John gets accused of demon possession. Jesus gets accused of being a party boy and hanging out with all the wrong people. And so the leaders dismiss them. Finally, Jesus throws up his hands and says, Wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. This is hard stuff to figure out. Where are we seeing God at work in the world today? Wigia. Where are we seeing God in all that is going on? The only way 
the only way to figure this out is by spending time with Jesus and, it, and with Jesus' community. And hear his invitation. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is a heavy time in our nation. Racial unrest and protests are ongoing. COVID-19 cases are rising rapidly. Now 48 of the 50 states report that. Virginia, too, is experiencing this as yesterday's new case total was the highest since June 7th. Millions are out of work and there's growing, growing uncertainty when and even if they will have jobs to go back to. And we are experiencing that in our own family. Through it all, Jesus says, come to me. You don't have to do it alone. Seven personal pronouns are used in verses 28, 29, and 30. So in all of what is going on, we do have a part to play. And there are things we can do. Because we are witnesses to God's work. And God works through our hands. So I ask the question again of all of us. What do we see? Rigiat. Where is God in all of this? And what is God saying to us through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus and the leading of the Holy Spirit? Where do we see God's designing love for us? Go and share the good news. God is here. Amen. Join us now as we sing.
called into unity with one another and the whole creation. Let us pray for our shared world. We pray for the church. Sustain us as we share your world. Embrace us as we struggle to find our common ground. Lift up leaders with powerful and prophetic voices. Free us from stagnant faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the well-being of creation. Protect the air, water, and the land from abuse and pollution. Free us from apathy in our care of creation and direct us toward sustainable living. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the nations, especially our nation, the United States, and Canada, celebrating nationhood this week. Guide the leaders in developing just policies and guide difficult conversations. Free us from patriotism that hinders relationship building. Lead us to expansive love for our neighbor. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for all in need, for all who are tired, feeling despair, sick, or oppressed. We especially lift, lift up Bill Evans, Spike and Donna Roberts. Barb Talbot, Marlene Jordan, Steve Sint, Charlotte Platko, all those who are fighting COVID-19. Take their yoke upon you and ease their burdens. Give your consolation and free us from all that keeps us bound. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for this congregation. Bless pastors, deacons, and congregational leaders. Energize children's ministry volunteers, church administrators, and those who maintain our building. Shine in this place that we might notice the ways your love transforms our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear prayer. our prayer. <clears throat> we give thanks for those who have died in faith. Welcome them into your eternal rest and comfort us in our grief until we are joined with them in new life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayers. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We continue our worship with the giving of an offering. On your screen, you will find ways that you can give online or through um, mail. And we have wonderful news. This past week, over 65 meals were, were delivered out to those who are currently housed in local hotels, those who experience homelessness. And they're there because they need to be safe. And a team brought 65 meals to them. Now, why is that significant? Because we could not have done that without your support of the Daily Bread Grant which we met and exceeded. God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. And God is here in this place, in this city, in this country. the faithful lightning of his terrible stood sword. Yes. 
sounded forth the trumpet that shall never call retreat. He is sifting out the hearts of men before the judgment seat. Oh, be swift, my soul, to answer him. Be jubilant, my feet. Our God is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. to one by the Holy Spirit. Let us pray as our Savior taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the, and the power, power and, and the, the glory, glory forever and ever. And ever. Amen. Amen. Join us in our celebration song.
neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God, the creator, Jesus, the Christ, the Holy Spirit, the comforter, bless us and keep us in eternal love. Amen. Join us as we sing Light Dawns on a Weary World. Springs, the hills and mountains shall bring forth wind singing. We shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace as all the world in wonder at the shalom. Love grows in a weary world when hungry hearts are bred and children's dreams are fed. mission this day just a few reminders immediately following this worship service at 11 a.m we'll have our virtual coffee hour tuesday is our virtual agape meal you can find more information about that on our website or um, <clears throat> in our constant contact or right here on the facebook page also remember that power in the spirit online begins this um, to this coming week be sure that you've registered Go in, go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Reach